Breaking news on Capitol Hill here in Washington. We may be getting close now uh, to having a new Speaker of the House. Let's go right to senior congressional correspondent Rachel Scott there for the latest on a big development. Rachel, what's, what's happened with Republicans in their struggle to pick a leader who would be the Speaker of the House? Well, Terry, I can tell you, buckle up for a fight. So Republicans have been huddled behind closed doors. You're going to start to see members pass by me leaving this meeting. They had an internal election and elected Congressman Steve Scalise, the majority leader, uh, to try to become the next Speaker of the House. To be clear here, this is an internal election. So he got the majority of support from members within his own party, but this does not mean that this is a done deal. Uh, he still has to secure 217 votes in order to become the next Speaker of the House. And this internal vote, this secret ballot, was far, was far less than that. I'm keeping my eye out to see if uh, Congressman Jim Jordan is going to be coming down this hallway in just a few moments, because he was uh, also vying to become the next Speaker of the House. And it's unclear at this point if Jordan, no, now knowing that Scalise has the majority of support from Republicans in his conference, is going to indicate that he will back Scalise. So far, he has not said that at all, obviously keeping his eyes focused on the Speaker's gavel. But I can tell you, we've already talked to some Republicans up here on Capitol Hill who insist that they want to see Jordan, that they will not vote for Scalise. And with these razor-thin majority that Republicans have here on Capitol Hill, they really have have to get their party united on this, and they're still struggling to come together to elect the next Speaker of the House, Terry. And by all means, Rachel, if you see anyone and can grab them live for an interview, go for it. So keep your eyes. Uh, I see the competing networks behind you, and I know you. You'll jump in there. You'll get it first because you are right there in front. So keep those eyes open. You don't even have to look at us if you want to keep your eyes on the hallway. Just tell us what comes next. So uh, essentially, this is going to be the big question of whether or not they're going to go to the floor for a vote. We don't know. Uh, I can tell you that most Republicans up here, they want to avoid the sort of 15 rounds uh, that they did beforehand. I just, hold on, we're seeing Anna Polina yep. Luna. Go, go ahead. Are you, are you going to support Scalise? We will see at 3 p.m. That's not a yes. That's, we'll see at 3 p.m. All right, so she just said we'll see at 3 p.m. That's indicating that there could be a, a floor vote for the Speaker of the House at 3 p.m. today. We know that's when the floor is going to open. Uh, we have our eye out on people like her, whether or not she's going to support Scalise. Uh, it only is going to take a handful of Republicans to tank his chances at becoming the next Speaker of the House. If they put up a stand and say that they want someone else, if they put up a stand and say they want Jordan, then we could see this go into multiple rounds. And again, remember, it took Kevin McCarthy, Kevin McCarthy 15 rounds to become the Speaker of the House. That is a fight here that many want to avoid altogether. As you point out, such a small majority, just a few votes, and a divided Republican Party that can't get along with itself, much much less the Democrats, <laughs> or to accomplish anything for the country. But I thought, Rachel, that there was a rule that they were going to put in that, uh, that they wouldn't go to a floor vote until somebody got 217 Republican votes in that private meeting you just covered. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Terry. So there was a lot of discussion here between Republicans on raising the threshold in order to uh, throw the support of, uh, among uh, a possible speaker in the Republican Party. They wanted to raise it from just a simple majority to 217, which is the number of votes that you would need in order to become the next speaker of the House. Uh, that push ultimately failed. It was defeated. And so, yes, while Scalise does have the support of the majority of the conference, it is unclear if he has 217 votes. Again, that is what he is going to need. And so what we could see is what some Republicans have been trying to prevent. You have aides sort of walking out of their offices here. I apologize. It's very chaotic. Uh, it's okay. What we may see is what many Republicans have been trying to prevent, which is a battle on the floor for Speaker of the House yet again, just months after we saw this play out with Kevin McCarthy. So from what we're gauging here by just what's happening live uh, coming down the hallways, yeah. we may at 3 p.m. have a vote and have a decision. Is that what we're thinking? Yeah. Let, let me ask. Is there, is there going to be yes. a vote at 3 p.m.? I think so. All right. So members are coming out right now, as you can see. I just want to give you a sense yeah, to just just show just you how chaotic them. this hallway is. Uh, okay. So I just talked to a few members. They're telling us that there will, they believe there will be a vote here at 3 p.m. As you can see, this is the hallway in which the members have been entering uh, this meeting. It is uh, a private meeting yes. behind closed doors, obviously. They had to actually turn in their cell phones. So this is the only way that we're now getting information. As they're walking out here, we're being able to ask them uh, who they supported. Hang on one second. It's going to be helpful in the process. Do you believe there's going to be a floor vote today at 3 p.m.? 
There's a possibility, yes. That would be the earliest. And, and Scalise obviously would need 217 votes. Are you confident that he would have that support from the conference? We're going to find out. I, I hope and believe that he will. Was there a message of unity, a message of not trying to have this go? It was a message over and over and over again that we all spoke about, as well as myself, that regardless of whomever wins this, we must be unified and we must stick together. All right, um, we're going to let okay. him go. I'm trying to <laughs> apologize for yeah, the shaky camera here. Go ahead here. and work your way. Uh, as you can tell, we're walking, down these <laughs> we're, we're, we're walking down these very small hallways, of course, where you got furniture, you got pizza here that reporters have been eating. Uh, and so this is <laughs> sort of the state of play as we know it, as we are live on the air. So I appreciate you all bearing with us. As oh, of right now, Steve yeah, Scalise has the support. For <laughs> We've Steve got Scalise about seven minutes, the majority so we'll keep of going, conference. Rachel. Hey, I Rachel, as uh, you... Steve Scalise. Uh, yeah, go ahead. As you buttonhole them, I want to ask you, that we just heard <laughs> talk about unity, but this is a divided party. Right. How divided are they? Well, what's your assessment? You're down there all the time. Are they going to be able to get together? Yeah, that is going to be the very big question here. And, Greg, if you don't mind, if you can just reverse shots here, because I'm going to walk just on the other side of him so I can have a, a glance on the other side of the camera at who's coming. This is an extremely divided Republican Party. And heading into this meeting, frustrations were mounting. You have a, a group of people who are really furious that Kevin McCarthy was ousted when he had the support of like 96% of the conference. And you had a group of people who obviously want a fresh face. They want a new conservative firebrand like Jim Jordan in there. And then you have a handful of people that also want to see Scalise. And then you had others that just simply wanted more time. There are deep divisions in this conference over so much. And so at this point, it's unclear if they're going to be able to come together to actually elect a new speaker. I'm going to try and grab Congressman Don Bacon. Stay with me here. Uh, yeah. He's one of the who had some concerns about whether or not. Walk and talk. Okay, thank you. I would have wanted to hear a very clear, let's get behind the winner. I, I didn't quite hear that today. You so are you worried this could be a mess when we get It may, and we, we got to make sure we got 217 to go on the floor. Should we That's be bracing idea. for a fight multiple rounds on the floor? I hope not. <laughs> you had concerns about this dragging out. I do. We have, first of all, I have eight proven people that are not loyal to the team at all. They're only to themselves. So we, we got the same problem. Uh, I just hope Steve can make sure he can count up 217 votes before we go on the floor. Well, Congressman, let, let me ask you, because the government shutdown is just around the corner. The deadline to fund the government is right before Thanksgiving. Absolutely. You have this crisis unfolding in yeah. Israel. Is there a sense of urgency to get this done quickly? Yes, there is an absolute urgency. First of all, it should never happen last week what happened. But we do need to get a speaker in place so we can govern. And what we should have heard today after the vote count was, I wholeheartedly support Steve. Let's get behind him. We did not hear that. And That's it. Do you expect there will be a vote today, or do you think that could get pushed? To Tentative today, but I don't know. Can I, mean, I just I... ask you one last question? Mm -hmm. McCarthy had more support than Steve Scalise does right now. Does this make sense to you, ousting no. McCarthy, when he had more support no. than the person that could you possibly can, replace him? You can talk to the 4% that hurt us. Uh, no, it does not make sense. He had 96% of the support. Uh, what these eight people did, they fired our MVP, the guy that carried us to the majority, if you look back in the last two election cycles, only the U.S. House saw GOP wins. We lost the White House, we lost Senate seats, we lost governor's races, we lost state legislatures. But we won in the House, and that was really because of Kevin McCarthy. And these eight people fired our MVP. It was wrong. Thank you, Congressman. All right, we're, and we're going to take you out of this really quickly as other reporters follow him. Hey, Rachel. Uh, and so I... Yeah, go ahead. I hope you guys are still with me on this. On yeah, this oh yeah, chase of course we're, we're still here. with you. I'm curious, is Matt's, uh, Matt Gates? have you seen him? Is he going to show up? I mean, <laughs> you know, there's, there's someone that yeah. could uh, keep rounds and rounds uh, going on the floor. Yeah, Congressman Gates has been in these meetings, and we've asked him pretty much every day who he is going to support, and he has not told us. He's keeping his lips sealed. And that's sort of what we were seeing from that handful of Republicans, the eight that decided to oust McCarthy. Most of them have not indicated yet who they plan to support. And again, that just shows you the power of a very small group, the power of just a handful of Republicans that can essentially hold this up. Even if the majority of the conference supports one leader, they are able to block that until they get on board. And so what we could be bracing for, as you just heard from Congressman Bacon, is a very long, possibly drawn-out fight.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.